that is the first, if you like, treated strip, and that's basically a nutritional program with an incredibly low rate fungicide. It had a half a litre of epoxyconazole as part of its T2 strategy, and that is it. So, £12 a hectare maximum spend on fungicide. Hmm. The nutritional bit has been based on vigor, manganese, and whatever else the site has shown up that's gone in at T0, T1, T2, and a T3 that has gone on earlier today. So, vigor's been the mainstay half litre, half litre, half litre. Manganese has come in on top of that, and then a little bit of zinc little bit of magnesium. No additional nitrogen, so the both plots you're looking at with and without are running standard RB209, 220 kilos of nitrogen based phosphorus and potassium and that's just that little bit of additional that's gone on through the foliage. And if I pick on one or two indicator plots, Oakley for example, real issues with yellow rust this year people very concerned about how it was going to break down, whether or not it was going to perform. Now it's a good yielder, it's got tremendous potential. But if you look here, this is our untreated plot, our control plot if you like. This is what would happen if we didn't have the Ag Chem. This is base MPK getting it right that far, but not putting any fungicides on. You can see quite a lot of the canopy is already dead. Partly that's early senescence, partly that is yellow rust. Yeah. And there was no yellow rust out here at all as of the 1st of June. This yellow rust has come in relatively quickly. And in terms of disease scoring here, you're now looking at a plot that is something like 80% infected with yellow rust. If you look at the canopy here, it's still green. It's still growing. Yes, there is senescence, but the disease pressure, you're looking at less than 15% disease in here. Now, the only chemistry that's gone on between the untreated plot and this plot, as I say, it's half a litre of epoxyconazole, and that wouldn't be a commercial fungicide strategy. That was purely in here. What timing was so that, Neil? This is the T2. Right. So if you look at the green leaf area, increase in flag leaf, increase in green leaf area, increase in stem strength, increase in ear size. This crop will still be growing in another couple of weeks' time. That crop will be finished in about five days' time. Although it's raining now, I don't think that crop is going to respond to the rain because it really hasn't got the green leaf area to do anything with. Again, as you look down through the canopy, the yellow rust is here. If I just take a flag leaf off there, you can actually see you've got the yellow rust, the stripes coming through there, a huge amount of infection coming onto that. If I take a flag leaf off here, the difference in terms of disease pressure. Predominantly, the difference between the two, a little bit of phosphorus and a little bit of manganese in an appropriate form. That crop is green and still growing, while its counterpart is very, very nearly given up. Now, the other thing to notice as you shoot through, have a look through this, there's a lot more fusarium. There's a lot of white heading coming through here. Whereas as you look into this canopy, much, much less. In fact, as you go through the plot itself, there's only two or three ears here. Whereas here, you've got quite a lot more fusarium coming through right now. That's definitely fusarium rather than yes. take all on yeah, it. Yeah, like yeah. Very, very definitely. These, these will be pink relatively soon. If we took the plant out there, they've still got a good, healthy root, mass. good, mature ear that's now got a lot of fusarium in it. And that's going to be an issue with regard to grain quality. Yeah. Quite possibly with mycotoxin residues in that, that isn't even going to make feed at £80 a tonne. Well, especially if it stays wet now. Especially yeah. if it stays wet now. So, again, in terms of, it's not just can we get more tonnes, it's can we get more quality. And yeah. one of the biggest things is we're looking at lower disease pressure, we're looking at improved performance, we're looking at far better ear development, canopy development, and then, particularly during the stressful time, crops turning up very much. A nice variety again, good potential, lots of ears here, lots of tillers here. It's showing quite a high level of stress. You can see the flag leaf is actually furling up, rolling up. So this plant is saying it's very unhappy with what's going on. To be honest, that leaf curl is a protective mechanism. It's actually keeping the plant just a little bit more integral with regard to how it's coping with the environment. Yep. But again, where we haven't had everything going on, the difference is not so stark because of the disease pressure and the disease resistance in this variety. Yep. Much, much better. But we've still got 
a response that's coming through. Nowhere near as clear, but it is showing that there's a little bit more in terms of advantage to using the nutritional side. And as you look at it, you know, the cost of production between the two, you only need half a ton, and you've not only paid for the products, you've got return on investment. So it's well worth having a look at what's going on. It's still a wonderful performer in terms of what it can do, early drilling, huge tillering potential, responds very well to low input situation. But even here, with and without, you've got a huge amount of green leaf areas being lost, the flag leaf is curled up, the canopy has almost disappeared, disease pressure, not so much of an issue here because this is a very, very robust variety. But as you look from one side to the other, there's still an appreciable increase in green leaf area and the crop is still maintaining just that little bit more growth. Again, nowhere near as distinct or as dramatic as you had with Oakley, but you've still got, if we take the flag leaf, you've still got just that little bit more, let's be fair. They're the same, but that's curled up quite a bit more. So in terms of how the plant is, you know, that's not me holding that leaf open, in terms of how the plant's responding to stress, that leaf and that plant is under a lot more stress than that one is. This plant with that leaf curled up like that, that's a drought response. This plant is saying, okay, he's not very happy, but he's still catching sunlight and producing photosynthesis. So this plant actually has responded, or will respond better, to a T3 or late inputs than that one will, because this one, as you can see, the flag leaves are curled up and are dying. So that's basically finished its yield building, and that's probably got another two or even three weeks to go, depending on what the weather does. Duxford, almost bulletproof in terms of disease resistance, doing very well indeed. But again, you can see the flag leaf here, curled up, dead. Not going to make a lot more contribution to grain fill now. In terms of disease, the canopy actually isn't diseased. That's natural senescence. The, the coloration that's coming through there is just the plant saying it hasn't got enough food and water to keep it going. But when we come and have a look at this one, again, not as dramatic, but you've still got fully expanded leaf. You've still got green leaf area that's doing very well indeed. And as again, if you pick up the, the flag leaf, it is showing signs of stress. But compared to, let's not be too unfair, Compared to everything else that's going on there, there's a lot more in terms of loss of chlorophyll, loss of nutrition on that situation there where we haven't added anything through the foliage. A variety we've been watching for a few years now comes out of the same stable as shamrock. Got a different set of genetics to it. Yeah, this it's a very different colour, isn't it? Very different. This has actually got the triticum dicocoides genes in, which means it's actually catching and handling chlorophyll in a slightly different way. It's got a disease ratings for almost everything of above eight. So this is seriously bulletproof. And despite what you may have read in the farming press, this is doing 12 tonnes a hectare without fungicides anyway. The trouble is it produces a very poor grain quality. Deep crease, hard to process, not terribly good in terms of its overall performance. But it's got, as I say, it's got disease ratings for almost everything of eight or nine. When you look at this as an untreated plot, you look at the stress within the canopy itself, there's a lot of early senescence. Again, the flag leaf is showing quite a big issue with regard to drought pressure, loss of chlorophyll, loss of nitrogen. And if we step across here where the nutritional bit has gone in, just as we we're seeing before, the green leaf is being maintained, the canopy is being maintained, the flag leaf is actually standing up just that little bit better. So we wouldn't expect a disease response here. This is a bulletproof variety in terms of plant pathology. And yet there's a greening response, there's a delay in senescence, there's an ability for the plant to cope with the stressful situation just that little bit better.